Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome this beautiful morning this morning. It is fall and it is hard to believe that October uh, is here already. It just, my goodness, uh, time just slips away. But welcome this morning. It is a, a joy to be here this morning with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have indeed created us in your image. And we are all your children. And we come to you trusting our lives in your hands. And so we lift our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. O God of creation, protect this earth from pollution and destruction. Watch over all who are in harm's way due to nature's fury, whether it be from <clears throat> hurricane or wildfire or flooding. We pray, O oh God, for the safekeeping of this good earth, that we would be good stewards of this creation that You have given us. O God of peace, deliver the nations from poverty and from violence. We pray for our own nation as we continue to struggle economically and physically through this pandemic. We pray for all those who are struggling to find employment. And we pray for employers struggling to find employees. We pray, O oh God, that people would be able to find the job that meets their needs and pays their bills and provides for their daily bread. We pray for those who are struggling, working two or three jobs, and still not making ends meet. We pray for those who are unable to work because of physical disability. Help them, O oh Lord, to find purpose in their life for you have found purpose in them. We pray, O oh God, for all nations that we together would seek peace and harmony with one another, that before swords are drawn, that diplomacy and peace would reign supreme. We pray, O oh God, for all those who suffer in illness, in sorrow and grief. We pray that you would bind up the brokenhearted, that you would heal the bodies of those who are ill. Watch over those who are preparing for surgery or recovering from surgery. We thank you for medical professionals of all types, doctors and nurses and EMTs, phlebotomists, x-ray technicians. We thank you for all who work together in the healing arts. Work in and through them and be with them in these difficult days of this pandemic as they are short-staffed and overburdened. 
as they struggle with the same concerns that all of us share for our own individual health and well-being. Be with them and walk with them and strengthen them for their journey ahead. We ask all of this, O God, in the name of the One who welcomes us as Your beloved children into the eternal realm of Your glory, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Your Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Illumine our way this morning that we might find in You our way, our truth, and our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we have two <clears throat> Gospel readings, both uh, from the New Testament. First is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Uh, both of these texts deal with the Kingdom of God. First from Matthew chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then a reading from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that He might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, He was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to Me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh.
Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever been given a gift? Something so wonderful, something that touched your life, that not just made your day, but made your week. Something that just lifted you up out of the pit, whatever that pit may have been, and brought you joy. That for me was my friend, Rags. My four-legged friend. She was a gift. A gift from Jim and Ada Noble. And it just happened to work out. It was a God thing. It's amazing how God works things out. You see, at the time, Jim and Ada were living uh, out on Presbyterian Way, um, near Bear Creek, uh, where all the Presbyterians live. <laughs> and they were in the process of moving into Eugene, and they knew that it was going to be too much for them to take rags with them. And you may or may not have heard this story, but Ada was literally sitting down at her computer about to write a advertisement uh, to post online uh, to advertise rags and find her a new home. And right in the middle of writing that advertisement, for some reason I popped in her mind and she got on the phone immediately and called me. And it didn't take just her asking for me to know the answer. The answer, of course, was yes. I couldn't see myself at that time and that place just after I had moved into the manse here. My life had been turned upside down. I couldn't see myself saying no to a gift of unconditional love. No to a gift of joy and happiness of kisses and wagging tails. I couldn't see myself being saying no to a gift that didn't hold regrets, but loved freely. I couldn't say no. And it was such a good gift. I've been thinking over the past week about other dogs that I've had in my life and how each of them have brought me joy. I remember one Christmas, we, uh, I was probably 10 years old or so, and my younger brother Sam was five, and uh, we were getting ready to go to uh, the yearly annual Christmas pageant, and it was just a few days before Christmas, and uh, my dad was nowhere to be seen, and we were kind of surprised because uh, we were supposed to eat dinner together and then go uh, to the church to the Christmas pageant. My dad shows up right before we are about to eat, and he shows up with this cute little English Cocker Spaniel puppy. He was Ian was his name. He was absolutely adorable. One of those puppies who was born with his adult skin so that you could literally pick him up and his paws still touched the ground. He was full of joy and life and love. And he was a part of our family for 16 years. Brought so much joy into our lives. What is the kingdom of God? 
I think dogs know it better than we do. I think they do. In fact, I saw this, uh, this great cartoon several years back, and it was a silhouette, a picture of a, a man and his dog sitting out watching a sunset. And above the man, there was a bubble, and the bubble had all of his thoughts, all of his worries and confusions and concerns. And then sitting next to the dog was a bubble above him, and all you could see in there was the man sitting next to his dog. The dog was in the moment. The dog was just happy to be there with their owner, with their person. No worrying about tomorrow, no worrying about yesterday. Just in the moment, here and now, full of love and joy. If you ask me, Pastor, do you think all dogs go to heaven? The answer to that is absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure there will be some cats there too. (laughs) They truly are a gift. This is what the kingdom of God is like. It is like that puppy given. It is that gift given of undeserved, unmerited, and unconditional love. It is that place of joy and reunion. It's like seeing a friend you haven't seen in 30 years. It is like a child going through surgery and being able to walk and dance and play and eat macaroni and cheese. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is a gift. A gift given by God for people who are loved by God. Now the, question, the answer to the question, who is loved by God, is easy. Everybody's favorite scripture verse, John 3.16, For God so loved... Very good. For God so loved the world. The question is, we've been asking several weeks now, who's inside, who's outside? There's always that worry about who's inside and who's outside. The Pharisees are very worried about who's inside and who's outside. The Romans are very worried about who's inside and who's outside. It seems to be the people in position of power and wealth and authority, those seem to be the insiders. But that's not the way it works in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, the insiders are the world's outsiders. In God's kingdom, it is those who mourn. It is the meek. It is the hungry and thirsty. It is the merciful, the peacemakers, the pure in heart. Those are the ones who are blessed and especially those who are persecuted. You see, the gift of God is is the kingdom. Jesus Himself began proclaiming the same message that John the Baptist had proclaimed. Right after His baptism, Jesus proclaims, Repent. Change your life. Change your way of living for the kingdom of God has come near. Now often, Jesus uses kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven synonymously, interchangeably. 
And often we tend to think of the kingdom of heaven as a place that you go after you die. And yet Jesus shows us you don't have to die to go there. The kingdom of God can be here and now. And we get glimpses of it all the time. And like I said, I think dogs have a special intuition for what the kingdom of heaven looks like. But more than anything, it is about us who receive it. It's not just the gift. We have to receive it. It's very easy for us to be too busy and say, I don't have time for this. This doesn't fit into my life. There are so many other distractions in this world, so many other things we could be doing. In fact, I think this is probably one of the biggest challenges that the church faces now that it did not face 70 years ago is there are so many other competing things to do. When you look at a small town like Cresswell 60, 70 years ago, if you weren't at the bar, you were at church. What else was there to do? Work, I suppose. But the kingdom of God is a gift. And we have to receive it. And Jesus is very clear about how we receive it. We do it like children receive a gift. I know that you're all thinking right now of a child on Christmas morning opening a gift, aren't you? It's a wonderful sight to see. As a parent, I can't tell you how many times I was setting aside that one particular gift and making sure that that one got open last. And to see the excitement and the anticipation and the joy. There have been more than one Christmas morning that I thought I was going to lose a child to asphyxiation. that they were just going to completely pass out because the joy was so overwhelming. You've been there. You've seen it. The kingdom of heaven is not socks on Christmas morning. The kingdom of heaven is that most precious gift that thing that you have wanted for and prayed for and yearned for your whole life. It is everything. And that's how we receive it. As a gift of love. And so we lift up those moments where we see that gift of love come into our lives in the here and now. That's why I thank God for rags. That's why I thank God for little boys being able to eat macaroni and cheese and friends being able to be reunited. Where has the kingdom of heaven broken in to your life? And how have you received it? My friends, go look. God's kingdom is breaking in all around us. And we are called to be kingdom people, to spread and to share that kingdom with those around us. I look out at you, And I see the kingdom of God. You are the kingdom for me. 
You are that gift. You are that blessing. You are that reunion. You are that meal. Maybe for a four-year-old, it's macaroni and cheese. For us, it is the body and the blood of Christ. And so let us seek His kingdom and receive it as the gift of love that it is. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin. This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day, and that He appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will gather from north and south, east and west, and sit at table and receive the gift of God's love broken and poured out for all. As we prepare to share in this meal, let us first come to God in prayer and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Praise to You, O God, for all Your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in Your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us and even when we turned from You, You remained ever faithful. Thank You, O God, for sending us Your Son and for the gift of His kingdom. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break the bread and share the cup giving ourselves to You to live for Him in joy and praise. Gracious God, pour out Your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these Your gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ and that we may be His body for the world. By Your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we will feast with Him and with all Your saints in Your eternal kingdom of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are Yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, God's kingdom is breaking in all around us. Open your eyes, your hearts, and your minds to seek that kingdom and give thanks to God for the joy freely offered in God's love. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.
Amen.